Well, hey everyone, and welcome to Embrace Church. So glad that you could join us today. Uh, if you're watching for the first time, my name is Brandon, and I'm one of the pastors. And uh, just to give you a couple of reminders, if you are looking for resources, uh, old sermon series, uh, those are all on our website, embracecanton.church. Uh, you'll find a previous sermon series, but also resources for family discipleship, other things like that. So please make time to check that out. Also, if you'd like to give, uh, to the Ministries of Embrace. Again, you can do that at our website, embracecan.church, or you can text uh, to the number that you now see on your screen. As always, thank you for your partnership. Thank you for your prayers and your support. Uh, we appreciate that greatly. Again, if you don't know, we've just kicked off a Be Generous campaign. Uh, in a, about a month, we are moving into a permanent location. Uh, for the last year, we've been tearing down and setting up every single Sunday, but now we'll be in a location where we can be uh, there every single day of the week, which that is really, really awesome. We're excited about that. And if you would like to help us in any way, again, there's a place on the website where you can do that. So thank you so much for your support. Well, today we're continuing our series, Embracing a Life with Jesus. Uh, we've been reading through the Gospels together as a church community, and now we are at the end of the Gospel of Luke. And in Luke chapter 24, you have the story of the resurrection, and you have the story of Jesus conquering death and coming back to life and just this incredible moment and uh, what I want us to see today is that the resurrection isn't just the climax of Jesus story it's really the culmination of the story of Jesus because he is life and everywhere he goes he brings life and that's what we've seen all throughout the gospel of Luke is that he is um, constantly serving people healing people, helping people, uh, raising people from the dead. Uh, he's serving the vulnerable, the least of these. Uh, he's restoring uh, those who were known as notorious sinners. He's making time for children. It's just everywhere he goes, uh, Jesus is bringing life to people. That's who he is. That is what he does. And if, to me, if you had to sum up the gospel in just one short phrase, it would be this line at the very end of Luke where it says, And the stone was rolled away. Uh, that's what Jesus does, is he removes stones. He brings life where there was once death. And at the end of the Gospels, we see Jesus crucified, we see him buried, but then three days later, he rises again, and the stone was rolled away. That's the good news of the Gospel that we see over and over again. And again, what I want us to see today is that the resurrection of Jesus wasn't just this isolated incident. It was the culmination of who Jesus is. Um, it's the culmination of his faithfulness throughout his life, and it's really the culmination of God's faithfulness all throughout history. And you see, the, the Easter story, the resurrection story, isn't just a past event. It's a past event with present day power. That the resurrection wasn't the ending of a story, it was actually the ushering in of a new beginning. And so I want us to see the implications that the resurrection has for you and for me. Uh, because within it, it has unleashed a new power, uh, a goodness and a mercy that is given now to all people. And what I want us to see today is that the God who moved that stone 2,000 years ago uh, is still moving stones today. That the same power that resurrected Christ, that same power has been given to you and to me. So I just want to take a few moments to look at some amazing gospel truths that we see all throughout the New Testament, the implications of the resurrections uh, for you and for me, and what that can look like in our lives, and what we see, again, throughout the New Testament in the early church. So the first amazing truth that we see is that uh, Jesus can remove the stone of sin. This is Romans 3, um, verses 23 through 24. We have, Apostle Paul writing to a group of Christians, and he tells them, We have all sinned, all of us fall short of God's glorious standard. And now God in his gracious kindness declares us not guilty. And he has done this through Christ Jesus, who has freed us by taking away our sins. So Paul mentions here, all of us have sinned, all of us have fallen short of God's glory. I Meaning we all have these stones, uh, these this past mistakes, this regret, this shame, this guilt that is in our lives because we've all done things that we shouldn't have done. And again, the good news of the gospel that Paul's writing here is because of the death and resurrection of Christ, that stone can be removed. You don't have to live a life consumed with guilt and shame. You don't have to allow your past mistakes uh, to dictate your present status. That you can be forgiven no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've said or thought or acted upon, 
you can be forgiven. He can remove that stone of sin and he replaces it with his grace and his mercy. And that's what Jesus can do for us. Now, not only that, the good news gets even better. He can not only remove the stone of sin, but he also removes the stone of disappointment. This is just a few chapters later, Romans 8, verse 28. Paul says, We know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Now, some of you are watching, you have a lot of pain from your past, but it's not primarily because of your own sin. It might be because of the sins of others or just the circumstances of life have been very, very difficult or challenging for you. And so there's just a lot of frustration or anger or bitterness because there's so many things uh, that have happened in your life that were beyond your control. And there's so many things in your life that have not turned out the way that you had hoped that they would turn out. Well, that's why I love this promise in Romans 8, 28, where Paul is saying, hey, God can take all things, even the bad things, and he can work them for good. Uh, that's the amazing thing about our God. He can take our worst moments and he can redeem them for our good and for his glory. Now make no mistake, God does not cause evil. He does not cause bad things to happen for a bigger purpose. That's not what he does. But God can take the bad things of this world. Uh, he can take our bad circumstances. He can take the things that uh, we regret or the things that cause us bitterness and he can use them for our good and for his glory. You see, we don't worship a distant deity. Uh, we worship a God who chose to enter into our brokenness, to be with us. Christ literally became God with us. And so he identified with us. He put on flesh. He understands what it's like to be us. You know, if you're watching, you've ever been hurt, or if you've ever been betrayed or mocked or made fun of, Jesus knows exactly what that feels like. And so you worship a God who's not only with you, but he understands you. He understands the suffering and the pain that you've experienced. And the good news of the gospel is not only does he identify with us, but he actually has the power to redeem us. That he can take all things and redeem them for good. For those who love God, for those who invite him into, into their lives, God can take even our bad moments and he can redeem them for good. That's the kind of God we worship. See, at the end of the day, everything in your past, whether it's your sin or whether it's your disappointments, Christ invites us to say, give me your worst and I will give you my best. Give me your sin and I will give you my grace. Give me your disappointments and I will give you hope. That's the kind of Savior we worship. He takes dead things and he brings them back to life. He takes these stones in our lives, these things that are uh, in our way, that are hindering our progress, and he can roll them away. That's the type of God we worship. Now, not only can he can heal our past, but he can also transform our future. He can also remove the stone of addiction. I love this verse in Romans chapter 6, uh, verses 4 through 6. Uh, the first time I read these verses, they changed my life. So pay attention to this amazing promise. Paul, again, writing to a church, he says, For we have died, and we were buried with Christ by our baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised as he was. Our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. And we are no longer slaves to sin. That's an amazing, amazing promise. The good news of the gospel is, again, through the death and resurrection of Christ, not only can we be forgiven of our sin, but we now have been given the power to overcome sin. We can live new lives. And this is really, really good news because a lot of us struggle with certain addictions, uh, certain things in our life that are controlling us and we're not controlling them, whether it's a, an addiction to lust or whether it's to money, uh, whether it's to TV or food, whatever it is, uh, we have these things in our life that are controlling us. And the good news of the gospel is that we can be freed. Uh, we can experience victory over sin. We can overcome these addictions. We don't have to repeat the same mistakes over and over again. And this isn't just a promise in the Bible. I've, I've experienced this in my own life. I've seen God give me victory over certain struggles. I've seen God give victory over other, uh, give victory for people that I've met as a pastor. Uh, I remember particularly one season of life, I was the youth pastor of a church in Kentucky. And it was a unique church. It was a recovery-based church uh, located in inner city uh, Lexington. 
And so at this church, you had addicts, you had recovering addicts, you had homeless, you had former homeless, uh, just a great diversity of people. And all throughout this church, you had these amazing testimonies, uh, testimonies that just made no sense apart from God's grace and God's power. In fact, our pastor was at one time an alcoholic and was now healed of that. We had a, a key lay leader in our church who, she was a former drug addict and one time prostitute, was now a key leader in our church. Total transformation. Uh, all of these amazing testimonies and none of them made sense apart from this resurrection power. Uh, Paul later says in the same chapter, he says, hey, that same power that rose Christ from the grave, that same power now lives in you. So we just need to kind of receive that truth that you are not just a failure. You don't just have to repeat the same mistakes. You don't have to be like other members in your family. No, you can lead a new life. Uh, you are no longer a slave to sin. You can experience victory and you can experience that victory today. That's the amazing good news of the gospel. Now, for some of us, it's not addiction maybe that's holding us back, but maybe it's fear. But again, God can remove this stone as well. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. Paul says, again, he's writing to a church that's experiencing tribulations, persecutions, uh, going through a lot of different things. And he says, so you should not be like cowering, fearful slaves. You should behave instead like God's very own children, adopted it into his family, calling him Abba Father. Uh, for some of us, fear is kind of paralyzing our lives, whether it's the fear of other people's opinions, whether it's the fear of not being liked, whether it's the fear of what's going on around us in the world. Uh, we have this anxiousness, this worriness that is kind of paralyzing uh, who we are, who we can become, our potential, or it's paralyzing our ability to follow God's calling on our life. You know, I think back to that first Easter uh, with those disciples. And I think about the fear they must have had, the fear that maybe they were next. They just um, heard about Christ being crucified. And, I, and I'm, I'm sure they were assuming that those authorities were going to be after them as well as, as his closest disciples. I'm sure they had fear that uh, this person they had invested three years in, this kingdom that they thought was going to take place in a certain way, I'm sure they were fearing that all of that was lost. I'm sure they had this uh, fear and this regret that they had denied their savior and their master and teacher. And I'm sure they feared that they would never have a second chance again to make that right. So you can imagine the joy and the excitement they experienced when they encountered the resurrected Christ. That all of a sudden that they could receive the second chance and this new opportunity at life. And that through the resurrection, they received the gift of the Holy Spirit that empowered them now to live a courageous life. And that Fast forward a few years, these same disciples who had denied Jesus or ran away when things got hard, these same disciples would turn the world upside down, spreading the faith across the world, no matter what anybody did to them. And they had this amazing courage and strength, all because of the resurrection of Christ, all because of the gift of the Holy Spirit that had been poured into them. And so these same words that were written to the early church are written to us. Paul is writing this church, he says, hey, don't be fearful. Have courage because you are a child of God. You've been adopted into his family. You're an heir along with Christ. So live like it. Don't allow fear to dictate the way you live, but have courage and strength knowing that you are a part of God's people and have the strength to become the person that God's called you to be and to do the things that God has called you to to do. God can remove that stone of fear out of our life that is holding us back. He can roll that away so that we can do the things that he's called us to do. So ultimately, God removes the stone of fear and he re uh, removes the ultimate fear, which is death. This is our last point. Uh, this is Romans chapter 8, verse 38. Uh, Paul says, I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, Neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's good news, amen. Uh, through the death and resurrection of Christ, uh, nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from the love of God. 
uh, where Jesus goes, there is life. And he has conquered death. He has conquered sin. And so nothing can separate us from God the Father. You know, ultimately, I think this is why so many people celebrate Easter. I think this is why so many people love the resurrection story. is because I think most people have this nagging question. And that question is, is this, is this life it? Uh, does our life end in the tomb and in the grave? Is this all that there is? And I think there's something inside of us that wants to believe that there is something more. That this life is not all that there is and that life does not end in a tomb or at a grave site. And my suggestion is maybe or perhaps uh, we have this yearning for more life or for eternal life because God has hardwired us for that desire. That God has hardwired us uh, to desire things like forgiveness and mercy and eternal life. So what we see in the resurrection story is that God has conquered death, that God has given us eternal life, that no loss is permanent, no harm is lasting, that things like death and struggle and disappointment, they will be a part of your story, but they are not the final word in your story. That ultimately, God's kingdom wins in the end, and that the victory of Jesus is our victory, and that at the end of the day, we will experience life, and that God has been with you before you were born, and he will be with you even after your death. That God is always with us. And because of that, we will always live. We will receive the eternal life that he gives us. You see, 2,000 years ago, there was a stone. And 2,000 years ago, God rolled that stone away. And my assumption is, is that you have stones in your life. Stones that are too big for you to move. Well, again, the good news is that Easter is not just a past event, but it's a past event with present day power. That Easter, the resurrection, wasn't just the ending of the story. It was the ushering in of a new beginning. The good news of the resurrection is that the God who spoke still speaks. That the God who forgave still forgives. That the God who came to this earth is coming into your life. And he comes into your life to move the stones that you cannot move. Because for him, no stone is too big. For him, all things are possible. And for him, all things that are dead can come back to life. Let me pray for us. Father, I just thank you for the good news of the gospel. Lord, I thank you that you are in the business of redemption. Lord, I thank you for the good news that the stone was rolled away. So Lord, I just pray for each person watching this. And Lord, whatever it is in their life that's getting in their way, whether it's sin or disappointment or fear, Lord, I pray that they would experience uh, your grace, your goodness. Lord, I pray that they would experience the good news of the gospel, Lord, that you can move whatever it is that's in their way, and that, Lord, nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate them from your love. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, you're going to see there with the video, there's some go deeper questions. We just encourage you with your family or friends or small group to just take some time to share and to discuss those questions together. As always, we hope you have a great week. Please know that we are praying for you and uh, we hope to see you again here next Sunday. God bless.